talk on disruptions. The issue of disruption is quite known to everybody. More so because we've gone through COVID. What bigger disruption can we have in our lives than the COVID story that occurred to us? And then we thought this is all going to be over. And suddenly we have the Russia-Ukraine war. If you ask me personally, my belief was that the war would end in 10 days. The might of Russia. Who's Ukraine? A small country. So whenever things go out of hand beyond what we believe is likely to happen, causes a huge amount of disruption. But disruptions in the mind and in the house are different. But disruptions of the economy and the movement that takes place, the supply chain, how do you get your food? How do you get your materials? How do you get various things? And these disruptions are something which we were able to counter. We had the creation of new things which happened, like e-commerce. Suddenly, everybody used the technology in order to get things right delivered at home. So, what was the consequence of that? Huge disruption because the shops were closed. They had no business whatsoever. And a huge new business opportunity sprang up which was, of course, the e-commerce story that has taken place. And hence, what really happens to us is a story that is universal. Because disruptions are a part of life. Disruptions are a part of the economic story of our country. The, the disruptions are a part of the story of the entire world as we see it and the changes that are taking place in the economy, which takes place from time to time. And, of course, the positive part of what disruptions are there. And those are many also. The Prime Minister talks about climatic change. And so, what happens to industry? All the cars making petrol cars, diesel cars, are sought to disappear in the next 10 years, okay? And hence, there's a huge disruption in the automobile industry. So what happens? We tomorrow, if you are having an industry which relies on petroleum products, which means there are more than 500 moving parts moving into the EV car, which has very few moving parts, the entire automobile industry is going in for a disruption. Anybody who does not want to change is going to be in difficulty. But let's look at some of the historical things that have happened. Companies which did not accept change, did not adapt to change, disappeared. Kodak is one big example of that story. Kodak dealt in films, and they produced cameras, the best in the world. Films was their forte. Can you believe it? That Kodak had the first knowledge and patents for the digital photography. However, the company thought it's not necessary. We have a huge factories, infrastructure producing films. And hence, we must, in fact, protect it. And they patent digital technology. However, time and tide waits for no man. And over a period of time, digital technology took place, and Kodak had to close down. In fact, it went bust and closed totally. So there are lots of examples of such stories taking place when people moved on. New technologies, of course, are the methodologies which have precipitated this change faster. What better example can we give than the mobile phone that we use today? Earlier, we would have a watch, 
we would have calendars, we would write letters, we would send telegrams, all that has disappeared. We now use our mobile phones for the purposes of not only talking to each other on the phone, but also all the other facilities. My morning alarm is on the phone. My messages is through my, through my phone, my communications, my interaction on video camera through FaceTime is on phone. All this happened. But can you imagine a technology company not willing to accept change? And what are those companies like? Nokia and Blackberry. They were the very, very advanced companies in mobile phones. And what happened when they did not want to adapt to disruption? When they did not want to adapt to change? They disappeared because the smartphones came into action. Nokia and BlackBerry believed that they didn't need to go into smartphones. And because you're not willing to accept new challenges of change taking place in technology, they kind of disappeared. So all that and more is very interesting to see. We are very much into education. When we talked about education and during COVID times, education required us to go online. All of a sudden, we found that it is okay to learn online. Is it also imperative to learn only on online? We don't know what the future holds for us. But obviously, we do feel today that the offline method of teaching is here to say because of the social interconnection and the improvement that we do in terms of interaction that we have with one another. But the story is different. The story goes that tomorrow it's not going to be only offline, but it's going to be also online. And so we come up with a new method of teaching, which is blended learning, both offline and online. And what's the advantage of this new technology? It means that even if I'm working, even if I'm growing old, if I'm 72, no, 73 years old today, all of us will still be able to use online platforms for the purpose of our learning, and which means also teaching. So even in the case of education, we are going to see a huge paradigm of disruption, which is really going to take place over a period of time, it is there. So we do see a lots of changes which take place on the methodologies that we are really to do it. What are the other changes which have taken place, which has caused disruption? Prime Minister Modi has been a leading example of what disruption means to the economy the opening of bank accounts of millions and millions of people all over the country. What has it actually done? We have been able to do a total disruption by direct money transfers to the farmers, to the poorest of the poor. And earlier, we have it on record that 60% of the money spent for such activity would be eaten away. Today, 100% of that money goes to that particular account and it is a direct money. So it, big changes are taking place in the economy and the entire aspect of it which is taking place. So today and tomorrow, we have to be agile in order to see that technology which is taking place and the situations which are really happening are really taking place in the economy. So, what is it? that makes us ready for the purposes of this disruption and the acceptance of change. And how do you and I actually do it? So I've been thinking about it and I said, let me pen down and say, share with you what is it that really makes us ready in order to accept and work on when we want to challenge disruption and to see how do we make and accept this new change. So, for number one, accept that disruption will take place 
in any or all aspects of our work and life. Acceptance in the mind. The second, once you accept that things are going to change, you should be ready mentally to say, I am willing to make this step or change in my life or in the method of Valali that I work or in the type of business that I do. The third step is create a new vision. For instance, when we had the disruption of COVID and we could not go to the retail shop, have a vision as to how is the alternative methods that we can possibly do in order to make a new enterprise. So e-commerce has been born and lots and lots of startups have taken place for the purposes of this. The next part, which is very important, is to understand what is the requirements of the end customer. What is the needs of the next customer? You may have technology, but if you don't have the needs of the end customer known to you, you cannot take advantage of this disruption. So, for example, um, Netflix is one of those examples which really said, I want, cannot go to my theater, can I bring the theater to my home? Uh, technology was available, but an app had to be created, systems had to be created in order to deal with it. The next part is know what the competition is doing. So while companies like Kodak knew that there is digital technology available with the other companies, they went to sleep and they did not think it was necessary to do so. But they did, they did know that the other competitors are also working on digital, but because of their patents, they thought they won't be able to reach there. But no, you must know what your competition is really doing in order to be able to move ahead on it. Another is to, the next point important is to support the people who have innovative ideas. Normally, what is the idea? We tend to tell such people who come up with young and innovative ideas that I am senior to you, so I know better. It's necessary to support new ideas, new technology, new directions in which we can do. The other aspect which is extremely important to handle change disruptions in the economic world is to set up programs and safe heavens for new ideas to be generated. Of course, that is exactly how startups have come up. You have created set heavens, you have seen images of what is going to happen, and the amount of money which is now available is something which is really out of the world. The next important point is to actually have faith in what you are doing. Many times, people are there to tell you, what are you trying? It's not necessary to you to look into that. If you have a great idea and you have the passion to do it, you can actually do anything on this earth. You can actually go right up to the moon and we have seen how small startups have actually taken pay, uh, happened in the world and we really have a lot of those in our country more than any other place in the world. We have almost 100 large billion dollar startups which are taking place in the world. And the last and most important part is that new ideas blended with technological inputs have seen the fastest growth in the world. So in this age and time, while we had the industrial revolution earlier, technology is actually leapfrogging most of the activity that we do. So if you can actually pick up an idea which helps the consumer, which may, may help the poor, which may help the farmer, which may help the student, which may help the anybody which is there, and you blend that with technology, there is a possibility of an exponential growth that can take place for the purposes of it. So is disruption bad? The answer is no. Disruptions may be bad at a sense of that point of time when it hits you, but if you seize that disruption as an opportunity to take off to the next level of our lives, 
then that's the most beautiful thing that you can do. This entire world has got more disruptions in the last decade than it had probably in the history of the world in order to have change. So, my young friends, be ready for disruptions. Seize that disruption in a systematic and methodical way in order to say that from where you are, we can take off to reach the moon. You can achieve anything and everything in terms of development, in terms of change, if you have your mind correct, your directions right, and you will be able to be the best. This is exactly what the world has learned in this last few years, and you and I have an opportunity of disruptions which will take advantage of rather than worrying and suffering the negatives of what disruption has done to so many in this world. I wish you all the very best, great learning, and have a great day. Thank you. <laughs>